Welcome to the famous 3n plus 1 conjecture. I'm Kevin Knight. There's a lot of famous unsolved problems in mathematics, all deep mysteries. But in this series, we're going to focus on the 3n plus 1 conjecture. Because in order to understand it, you only need to know how to add and multiply numbers. For example, what's 3 times 7 plus 1? That's 21 plus 1 equals 22. And what's 22 divided by 2? Right, 11. Okay, that means we're ready to go. The 3n plus 1 conjecture goes like this. Pick any number. If it's even, cut it in half. If it's odd, multiply by 3 and add 1. Then repeat. Okay, let's pick a number to start with, say 10. 10's even, so we cut it in half and get 5. 5's odd, so we multiply by 3 and add 1, which gives us 16. 16 is even, so we cut it in half to 8, which we cut in half to 4, then 2, then 1. We'll make it a rule to stop at 1. Okay, let's try starting with 11 instead of 10. We get 11, 34, 17, 52, cut it in half to 26, again to 13, up to 40, down to 20, and then 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Okay, that took a little bit longer, but it also got to 1. The famous 3n plus 1 conjecture says every number goes to 1. Is that true? Is that false? No mathematician knows the answer, so it's a deep mystery. If we think the conjecture is false, we can look for a number that doesn't go to 1. Let's see. 2 goes to 1 in one step. 3 goes to 1, but it takes a little longer, 7 steps. 4 goes to 1, 5 goes to 1, 6 goes to 1. Now when we get up to something like 9, it also goes to 1, but it goes through a long, seemingly random path of numbers. See here it goes all the way up to 52, then goes all the way back down to 1. How about something bigger, like 31? If we start with 31, you can see in this giant original oil painting, that 31's odd, so we multiply by 3 and add 1, which gives 94. Dividing this in half gives 47, and so on and so on. Whoa, up to over 9,000 at this point. Maybe this is going to keep going up forever and ever. No, it starts plummeting again and finally reaches 1. Okay, we checked a bunch of numbers and they all go to 1. But nobody knows if every number goes to 1. For example, there might be some number that just wanders off into infinity. Or there might be a loop. Some number might lead back to itself. And then just go round and round, never reaching 1. If you could find a loop, you could write what would be one of the most famous mathematical papers ever. It would be very short. The 3n plus 1 problem has a loop by you. If we start with this huge number and iterate the 3n plus 1 operations, we eventually get back to the same number, this number. Nobody's ever checked that number. Should we check it right now? Nah, not right now. We don't have time. But you can imagine that mathematicians with computers have checked a lot of numbers. Actually, they check the first billion billion numbers, and they all go to 1. No loops. You might say, well then, the odds are there aren't any loops ever. And in a later episode, we're actually going to bizarrely calculate those odds exactly. But even with the odds, maybe there is a loop out there. Maybe we get lucky because contrary to popular belief, math is unpredictable and chaotic. Let me tell you the strange story of another conjecture. Back in 1951, a guy named Louis Mordell considered a very old equation. x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed equals 3. He observed that there only seem to be two solutions. The first is 1 cubed plus 1 cubed plus 1 cubed equals 3. That's the easy one. The second one is 4 cubed plus 4 cubed plus negative 5 cubed equals 3 because negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is negative 125 and 64 plus 64 is 128 minus 125 is 3. Now uh, Louis Mordell noted that no matter what other values of xy people x, y, and z people tried over hundreds of years they could never get 3 to come out. So we have a conjecture, an unproven mathematical assertion that might be true or might be false. And that was that. Until in 2019, two guys named Booker and Sutherland found another solution. 
and this one goes like this. 569 quintillion, 936 quadrillion, 821 trillion, 221 billion, 962 million, 380,720 cubed, plus this other number cubed, plus this other number cubed equals three. So they discovered a counterexample and they had to go pretty far out to find it. So what's the moral of this story? Well, maybe there's a loop for the three n plus one problem, maybe involving some huge numbers, but nobody found it yet. And we're gonna look at that in upcoming episodes. But first, a warning. The famous mathematician and professional couch surfer, Paul Erdos, not only couldn't solve this problem himself, he said, quote, mathematics is not ready for such problems, unquote. In other words, if you try to solve this problem, you're sure to fall into a morass, a pit, a quagmire, wasting years of your life trying to solve something that mathematics itself is not ready for, and you will wind up making videos on YouTube. Paul Erdos would know. He was one of the most collaborative mathematicians in history. If you co-authored a paper with Erdos, you have an Erdos number of one. If you co-authored a paper with someone who co-authored a paper with Erdos, your Erdos number is two. It's like the Kevin Bacon number. If you acted in a movie with someone who acted in a movie with someone who acted in a movie with Kevin Bacon, then you have a Bacon number of three. Now, some people have a Bacon Erdos number that combines the two. For example, Natalie Portman, acts in cool movies like Star Wars and also writes cool papers about hemoglobin concentration in baby brains. Her bacon Erdos number is five plus two equals seven. Okay, in upcoming episodes, we'll look at some amazing patterns that might help us resolve the three N plus one conjecture. But first, we're gonna build a computer out of colored marbles and two pool cues.